I love Apple products. I have the Apple Watch Ultra, the iPhone 14 Pro Max, the 11 inch M1 iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard. So naturally when Apple announced that they were coming out with a new 15 inch MacBook Air with the M2 chip, I had to check it out. So these are my biggest takeaways from the new 15 inch MacBook Air. Let's get into it. Now before we begin, I just wanted to say thank you so much for checking out this video and if you want to hit that big subscribe button down below, it really means a lot to me personally and obviously helps the channel grow. Okay, let's get into it. Now before picking this up, I was primarily using the 11 inch M1 iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard as my main mobile computing device. So this was a pretty hefty upgrade. The first thing you're going to notice is obviously the size and the weight. It is shockingly light for how big it is. Honestly, first thought out of the box was, is this too big? The screen is absolutely massive. And one of the main reasons I didn't end up going with their M1 MacBook Air, I just didn't really see jumping from an 11 inch to a 13 inch as being that dramatic, but you really notice a difference going from 11 inches to 15 inches. But for it being as large as it is, Apple always does an amazing job with the design, having it look super sleek. I ended up going with the midnight color, which unfortunately is an absolute fingerprint magnet. So just be aware that if you do go with this color that you will be wiping it daily. The screen obviously looks amazing too, and the sound isn't even that bad. It actually has a really rich, full sound, which kind of brings me into the second takeaway here, which is going to be the performance. I got super excited when DaVinci Resolve was announced for the iPad Pro, another reason that I was kind of holding out uh, to get an M1 MacBook Air because I knew DaVinci Resolve was coming out at the end of 2022. Unfortunately, DaVinci Resolve for the iPad has pretty limited features as of right now. I was a little disappointed with that. Now, if you're planning on doing heavy workloads, that will be a little bit of an issue, which is why I ultimately went with the M2 MacBook Air. Another reason I'm decided to upgrade was I recently got a camera that now shoots in 4K. So I knew I was going to need a high performing GPU to really handle that kind of workload. This thing had zero problem with editing 4K footage. I didn't have any sort of buffer rendering when I was scrolling through the clips. It worked like a dream. And when it came to rendering the entire edit, it took literally 30 seconds. Unfortunately, they didn't have any of the 16 gigabyte models in store. You actually have to order that. I ultimately opted to get the eight gigabytes of RAM model because it was convenient and I really didn't want to wait. Now, I don't really know why Apple doesn't offer a 16 gigabyte RAM model, especially in 2023, just right out of the store and that you do have to order it. Probably honestly has to do with them really wanting to upsell you again to get you to get the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I believe comes standard with 16 gigabytes, or at least what I found at my local Apple store was that they did have those models in stock. So I guess this is kind of a good way to segue into a third takeaway here, which is the Apple ecosystem and the Apple ladder. Now, Apple is amazing at getting people to spend more money than they initially intended to. This has to do with the ladder. There's some other content creators out there that have talked about this before, but if you're unfamiliar, essentially what it is, is they give you a base model. It might not have everything you want, so you have to add a little piece, but when you add that little piece, then you might as well just kind of upgrade to this next model, which is only a slightly higher price and so forth and so on, ultimately getting you further and further up that pricing ladder. I mean, literally with a few clicks, this computer goes from $12.99 to over $2,000. And once Apple has you into their ecosystem, it is extremely hard to leave. Simple things like blue messages set them apart from their other competitors, which are literally doing the same thing, uh, about the same, and if not even a little bit better. Look, I'm a huge Apple fan. I absolutely love the ecosystem. I love the interaction between all of my devices simultaneously. The fact that you can be on your iPad and airdrop things or from your phone and upload it directly to your computer, it's fantastic. 
Apple AirPlay. You can even use your iPad as a second monitor and then literally using the mouse, you can just kind of scroll over and then the mouse goes right on the iPad. It's like incredible. Usually you have to download other apps to be able to do that or literally buy a second monitor. So the fact that I can seamlessly do that, I can seamlessly drop files to one another right when I need them, it's fantastic. I guess, should you buy this MacBook? Or let me rephrase, who should buy this MacBook? I think that if you already have a MacBook, getting this is going to seem like a very lateral move. There's no reason to go out, rush out to the store and get this model unless you absolutely desire to have that large screen. But the difference in performance from the M1 to the M2 chip is pretty insignificant overall. There is obviously a performance boost when you go with the M2 chip, but people are still finding that their M1 chips work just fine. Apple actually has had a dip in sales because of that, and that's why they're holding off on any subsequent M chips. So unless you're in the market for a brand new laptop because you don't have one or you're swapping from Windows to Apple, this is going to be a great entry level. I wouldn't necessarily suggest going out and getting this. Now, if you're new to the Apple ecosystem, this is probably going to be the new Apple introductory standard laptop MacBook that they offer uh, moving forward. They won't have any other small ones. They'll probably keep with this one, even though the price tag is a little bit high coming in base at $1299. And as I said, you can really kind of get up there in price very, very quickly. But the things that this offers are fantastic. Great for students, great for starting out content creation. I love having the bigger screen when I'm editing and doing all that kind of stuff. So if you're outside of the Apple ecosystem looking to get in, this is a fantastic way to start. Okay, so last little thing here, last takeaway or a little bonus kind of secret hidden thing here. Don't go to the Apple store and buy this. Go online. Apple usually advertises for student pricing and they have a little blurb on their website or sometimes when you go in the store, it'll say that, but not all the time. They actually offer their education pricing year round. Now, sometimes the deals aren't quite as good, but you have to scroll way down to the bottom of the website now and click on education and shop for college. Everything that they have on there is listed $100 cheaper base. Not only that, but they usually have some other specialty offer. And right now, the time of this video, is another $150 Apple gift card. And sometimes when they do the Shop for College big advertisement push, they'll give you a set of like AirPods or, or Beats. That's actually how I got my headphones. It's awesome that they do that, but you don't need to do it. So again, just scroll down all the way to the bottom and click it and you'll save yourself a little bit of dollars. Go on, do with that information what you want. Once again, just wanted to say thank you so much for watching this video. And if you wanted to drop a comment, like, even subscribe to the channel, it would really mean a lot to me and really helps this channel grow. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.